QuickBooks Online 2024 Budgeted Income Statement Reports. Get ready and some coffee because we don't accept excuses about being too tired unless someone like forced you to carry two tires, in which case then you've been too tired against your will. But in any case, let's get into it. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our Geek Ray Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation, opening the major financial statement reports as done every time the reports on the left. Within the favorites, we're going to be right-clicking on that balance sheet to open a link in a new tab. The same with the profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement. And once again, for the trusty trial balance, we're going to tab to the right, close up the hamburger, and change that range. We're going from 010124 tab, 02924 tab, selecting the drop-down so we can see this on a side-by-side -side basis. Let's tab to the right and repeat the process. We're closing that hamburger on the profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement, changing the range in 010124 tab, 02924 tab. Let's see this on a month by month breakout and then tab to the right and one more rep on this one. One more rep people, 010124, 02924 and then select the drop down months and then we will run the report that was the last one we pushed it out boom okay so then let's go back to the income statement last time we've been thinking about the budgeting process related to the income statement thus far noting that uh, the method you might want to use is to export the income statement from prior periods to something like excel like we did here and then use excel to then take in the information from all the marketing geniuses and whatnot so that we can come up with a plan to improve revenue that's the goal we're trying aren't we trying to make money i feel like some someone lost the message along the way i thought the things that were changing were supposed to help us make money someone needs to tell the entertainment area the movie makers or something need to the, the bottom line seems to be here anyway they that's what's going to happen we've made the changes in here and then we imported this back into our QuickBooks. So we put it back into QuickBooks by going, let's go to the first tab. We went into our drop down up top and then we went into our budgeting and we created our budget. And we did so by basically having a template in Excel and then importing it, which is a pretty, I think a quick method to do it. So then we made sure that we didn't have any adjustments to it. It says here, run the budget versus the actual so you could actually run the report uh from here we, we also could look at the reports within the report center so if you go to the report center and type in for example budget then you will see our two main and primary uh budget reports here now note that if you don't have any budgets then you're not going to find these reports in the report center and so let's actually duplicate this tab i'm going to right click on it and duplicate it and then i'll open the report i'm going to pull it to the right so now we have our reports over here i'm going to type in budget and then let's do the overview first so this is the overview just giving us the data for the budget let's close up the hamburger we have similar options up top as we do for other types of reports but remember the budget report is different than any other kind of financial report when we look at all the other financial reports for the most part we're talking about reports that will be constructed along with the major financial statement reports balance sheet and income statement as we do the data input usually with these forms and by cycle customer cycle vendor cycle and uh the payroll uh cycle the exceptions to that include say the bank reconciliation which is an internal control check report so it's not being constructed as we do the data input 
but rather uh, created as a check to the bank. And then of course the budgets here being another kind of exception because they are not based on past data, they're based on future data. So of course, they're not actually linked to the, to the, to the data input forms as are all other reports. All other reports are generally giving more information about one or multiple line items on the balance sheet income statement, the major two reports. So we have less options uh, as a result, in essence, of, of the budget than we have on like a, a income statement. So if I look at the income statement, for example, you can see we have the date ranges that we can be putting in place. We have a whole lot of drop down options in terms of how we want to view the data by month, by quarter, by year. And then we can even view it by customer, vendor, employees, and so on. We have our information here to show active. This, this whole thing is not really necessary in uh, a budget because we're not gonna have any zero balance that show, right? So it's only gonna show the ones that have numbers in it generally. And then all of this stuff with a comparison to the previous period and where we can make comparative reports isn't generally gonna be shown on uh, the budget because it's just gonna show what we have put in place and compare budget to actual when we run that report. We can't really toggle generally between the cash and accrual basis as we can with the profit and loss because the profit and loss is based on this data input form and they can change when, for example, revenue is recognized from the point of the invoice to the received payment. The budget is just us inputting data, so it's not gonna have that toggle. And if we go into some more of the customized areas, just note we have some formatting things that will be somewhat the same. Our filtering options are probably not gonna be as relevant on, on a budget, although they're not all that relevant on an income statement here. They're more relevant when we get in transaction detail reports. And then we've got like the header information, which will be somewhat similar on the reports. So if I look at the same thing on the budget, right, we've got the, the custom up top, we've got the, the date range. So we could change the date range. I could bring this back to just uh, 013124 and run it there. So I can limit uh, the, the date range if I so choose uh, within the data input that we have put into the system, which was a year's worth of data input for 2024. Let's go back to uh, 123124 uh run it and so here's all the months we have our drop down of multiple different kinds of budgets meaning we could have more than one uh budget and so this drop down will allow us to toggle between the budgets which we can do here or as you saw if we go into the first tab we can go into our budget view and go into our d -d 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 budgets here and we can we can sort through our our, our various budgets this way as well and hide hide uh, the inactive budget. So if I hit the drop down, we can run the budget overview report, uh, edit, archive it so we can archive the budget and then we can duplicate the budget or delete the budget as time passes uh, and the budget becomes obsolete possibly over time. And then we have, uh, the, the, it does still have the active zero and non zeros. So Again, if I say, if I show all the accounts and say run it, that gives me all the accounts that I didn't put any data input into the budget. So that's probably not that useful, all the, you know, because you know it might be useful to see, I guess, if you didn't have all these different accounts. But generally, you're probably not going to use that much because you want to show all the ones that are active that you put information in. I don't think the difference between active and non-zero is going to have any any difference due to the fact that this information is just strictly from data input. At, whereas if there was a clearing account in like an income statement, then the active accounts while still being zero would still have possible data that you can drill down on. So let's go back to, to this format, uh, run it. So there we, so those are the basic options. If I go to the customize up top, you've got the budget information here. We can do the same kind of customizing for the we could divide it by thousands. In other words, if we wanted to to show it in a, in, a, in a smaller, easier to read format, we can remove the cents, which I think is a common thing to do because it's a budget. The pennies are probably not going to be relevant to de decision making. And if you're looking at large numbers, dividing by a thousand might be relevant as well, because once again, it's a budget 
which by definition is is an estimate. I like to have the negative numbers uh, bracketed personally and red, and then uh, uh, show grid uh, actual. So so we could have the actual verse versus months, actual versus. So I'm going to leave that here, and then we got filters. So we have our one filtering. We have far less filtering options, uh, but generally we're not going to do a whole lot of filtering with it. And then we have our header and footer down below where we have the logo. We could put our logo on there. <laughs> Company name. We can change the name. We can, we can adjust the report title as normal. We can, uh, the, the report period, we can have it there or not. We can take away the date prepared and the time prepared, which I typically do. And then we can align it centered by default or we can align the headers to the right or to the left. Same with the footers. Let's go ahead and save that. So now I put the logo in there. So now it looks way better. And then I've removed uh, the pennies so we can see that. And then the negative numbers are showing as uh, as bracketed. So we can have our negative uh, net income right there. So that's going to be the general overview. Obviously, this is just basically reflecting our data input that we put into the system on a month by month basis looks like an income statement. So income statement, performance statement, we have our estimated income up top, we can scrunch all these numbers down to to the baseline. So this would be like our basic uh, uh, report. So here's our income that we expect to have on a month by month basis. Here's the total on the year. Here's the cost of goods sold the gross profit is just subtracting those out. That's the subtotal to get on the way to net income, uh, just a pit stop along the way. Then we have all the expenses, typically the largest category. And then we've got the net operating income. Net operating income is the estimate of income from normal operations. And then we have the other expenses and we could possibly have other income under that. Those are going to be income and expenses related to things that are not part of the normal business operations. So we're not sure if they're going to be happening again next year, like if we got hit by a hurricane or something, and we happen to be in non hurricane area. <laughs> so we don't usually get hit by hurricanes, then maybe that would go into other because you don't expect it to be repeating, for example. And then we've got uh, net other income and then uh, net income, the bottom line, we're looking at the end of the year to be making 179 953 net income 125 969 due to the brilliant marketing experts that we brought in which I'm sure are just going to take us to the top. They brought they bought some new IPs, they brought in some new IP properties and they're going to and now they're going to change them and make them better cuz the IP properties before were making a lot of money but they were stupid compared to the according to the the team here and so they're going to buy them and then make them better and then that's going to make us a whole lot of money all right let's look at another report let's hit the let's right click on this one and duplicate it look at the budget versus actual report and we're going to go into the reports on the left hand side we can type in budget versus actual let's go into that one and close the hand boogie so now we, we have the custom report. It's we're still looking at the entire year. We're still looking at the same the one budget that we made, but now we're comparing it to the actual and active and it's on the accrual. So what this is doing, of course, is giving us each month and then it looks quite expansive because we're looking at each month and basically the activity of the comparison of the actual what happened versus the budget. Now, remember, when we did the data input, we input the data. Uh, we input the data on a uh, as as for the first two months of January. So we have actual data and budget data for January and February, in other words, and we don't have any any actual data for anything past that point. So the budget versus actual will then be more relevant as time passes. So clearly, if I put a year's worth of two thousand. 24 budget in place, then after two months have passed, we might run this report for the two months that have passed, which would be 02, uh, 20, 29 to four. And then we can see our, our budget breakout for the two month period. Now, the thing with these budget reports, you would kind of think that they that if you entered this one budget on a month by month basis, 
that you can change the dates to like uh, to like a quarter, just showing you the th quarter by quarter. And you can't do that. You could make multiple budgets, right? So I could upload another budget that's quarter by quarter versus month by month and year by year. Uh, but but so that's kind of interesting. You'd kind of think that the, they'd be able to figure a way that you could adjust the whole year budget that you put in month by month to quarterlies, but you can't really do that. You can add another budget, you know, and see it that way. But in any case, we've got then the the January. Here's the actual number. Here's what was budgeted. So if we pull out the trustee calculator, we could say to do what has happened. What has happened? We could, let's look at the totals down here. So we're going to say this is the five six eight five seven minus the thirty four six zero five fifty gives us a difference of the nineteen two fifty one fifty, and this is going to be a percent uh, of the budget. So if I take then the no note this is not a change of of over time so you might think you take the difference divided by like one of the budget or the actual but we're looking at the comparison of the actual 53857 divided by the budget uh 34605.5 so so if i move the decimal two places over the actual is 155.63 over the percent over the budget that's how you're looking at the you know the percent of the budget so if you looked at it if you had one that was lower like this one here here's what actually happened this was the actual 15 divided by what was budgeted 17.5 so now we're saying it's if i move the decimal two places over the actual was 85 percent of the budget now obviously on the income side of things uh if we're if we're over budget that that clearly is good whereas on the expense side of things uh then then we would we would hope to be basically under budget is the general idea right so this is under budget here so this one's over budget so then we can go through here and compare what actually happened to what we planned happened this is the the big report or the best report in quickbooks this is why you import the budget back into quickbooks so that as time passes you can run reports such as this and compare what actually happened to what was budgeted now then you've got the two months here and then you've got the total so this is the year to date total right because there's only been we only did data input for uh the two months it's not let me scroll to the right what if i scroll okay i had to zoom out a little bit so then we get the total over here and and so we can look at basically the year to date budget versus actual so that's the general uh, income statement. That's the major performance uh, type of report. So quick recap, if you are a bookkeeper, then note that and, and that you can't really be expected to just generate a really nice budget uh, just by the past data, right? Because it's kind of outside what the bookkeeper does. But QuickBooks does have the capacity to make a budget. And if you wanna make like a basic budget based on just past numbers, you can do that as a bookkeeper. That might be somewhat impressive. You can say, hey, look, this is what happened last year. I made a quick budget uh, for you, but that budget's not going to be all that useful given the fact that you could run reports of an income statement as time passes comparing the current period uh, to the prior period, right? So, so, so although the budget might give you a, a little bit different look as you break it out on like a month by month budget, uh, the budget, so but so what what would really be helpful with the budget if you wanted to provide that as a bookkeeper or as part of the accounting department is to take the accounting skills we have and the the understanding of what the financial statement looks like create the past data and then try to figure out what changes could be made such as marketing what's going to happen in the economy changing price levels and whatnot and then predicting what's going to happen in 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 the business and then of course when we see what reality happens uh, then we should adjust our models this is where it seems like a lot of a lot of businesses like even the big ones don't seem to be doing it this way it's like wait a sec you just lost hollywood you just lost tons of money like over and then over and then over are you comparing like what you did to what you like 
plan to do, and then you're supposed to change according to like what the customers are want because they're going to pay you. You're, you're doing stuff so that they pay you, right? So then we make changes so that we increase the revenue. We're trying to we're trying to grow. We're trying to we're trying to grow the business. That's the idea. Anyway, so in a following presentation, we'll get into the balance sheet. The balance sheet's a little bit uh, more complicated because again, the balance sheet is where we end up after the performance of the income statement. So we'll get into a little bit of theory on that one, uh, but not too much. We have a whole other course or section on that if you want to get into budgets in more detail. But we'll, we'll make a budget in the balance sheet, and then we'll upload that into QuickBooks as well.